praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. We thank you, Father. We give you praise, glory, honor, and adoration, Lord. Father, we live for your glory, Lord. Our life is for your glory. Thank you, Father, for this hour. Lord, speak to us, Father. Break the bread of life, which is your body and your blood, unto us this hour. May you open the eyes of your children, Lord, to see your face and partake of this great feast this hour, Lord. Speak through your servant unto your children, Father. Father, I speak, O oh God, to as many that needs a touch, a touch of healing, O oh God, physically, spiritually, Lord. I speak healing in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For in Jesus Christ's name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Quickly, shall we turn our Bible? Let's turn our Bible to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. You are welcome in his presence in Jesus Christ's name. So let's read Revelation 21. We're going to read verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more deaths, neither sorrow, nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. By the grace of God, I want to speak on the tabernacle of God, part one. This message is going to come to you in simplicity. Don't expect anything deep. It's going to come to you in simplicity. What is a tabernacle? The tabernacle is a house. A place of habitation. Oh my. Now, I, I want us to get this very well. This place of habitation is God's habitation from this place the lord is ministering to the nations ministering to all let somebody say amen to that amen. that is what a tabernacle is is a habitat and the tabernacle we are talking about is the habitat of the almighty the dwelling place of the almighty God himself. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. The Bible says, 
before the foundation of the world. There were things that the Lord did before the foundation of the world. Before the lowing down. He chose a people. And the Bible calls them the body of Christ. His dwelling place. His tabernacle. Now these people that he chose are men. They are men. So I want you to pay attention. Because when you look, you understand that when Jesus was born, Jesus was to be called Emmanuel, the tabernacle of God with men. Right from when he was a baby, he was to be called Emmanuel, the tabernacle of God with men. And everyone that the Lord has foreknown before the foundation of the world, as they are declared, they are the tabernacle of God. You can accept it. You can reject it. But I know the sheep of Christ will hear the voice of Christ. The Lord was speaking to Jeremiah. He said, I know you before you were conceived. And I have ordained you to be a prophet. So why Jeremiah was born, he was a prophet. He was a prophet. He was the mouthpiece of God to a people. Why he was born? He said, I knew you before you were conceived. And I have ordained you. So every body of Christ. Chosen in Christ. Known of the father. They are the tabernacle of God. Let somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says. Don't you know. That you are the temple of God. That the Lord dwells. Don't you know that you are the temple of God. Don't you know. Now listen. From Revelation 21, where we read, if you go up, you will notice something. Revelation 21, 1, you will notice something. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth, we are passed away. He saw. Now, and there was no sea. He said, I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride at dawn for her husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold now when when he came to the new heaven and the new earth he saw it he said he was like a vision I saw I saw a new heaven. I saw a new earth. But when he go to the tabernacle, he said, Behold! Oh my! Oh my! We have come to that time that we have to look within. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. We have come to that time that you have to look within. You have to understand that there is something special about you. There is something special. There is something peculiar. There is something supernatural. There is something that is greater than anything you can think about. And that is the kingdom of God. And that kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. He said, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. When he gets to the new heaven, he says, I saw. I saw. But when he gets to the tabernacle, he said, behold. Now listen. Something is making us not to behold the tabernacle of God that is with men. Something is making us. And that is why he saw the new heaven first. What do you think is the new heaven? The new heaven is a new mind. The mind of Christ. The new earth is a new heart. 
the mind of Christ, the heart of Christ. Praise be the name of the Lord. There are things that make you look away from the tabernacle of God and begin to look at left and right. Look at the sky. Look at the desert. Look at different, different places and looking away from within. There are things that made you that way. You are looking at left and right, looking at the deserts, looking at the skies. There are things that have made you that way. And that is why you need a new mind, a new heart. Praise be the name of the Lord. When there is a new heart, then out of that heaven, out of that heart, there is going to be a voice. A voice that is calling you to look, behold. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with me. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't miss this. Oh my. Now listen. He didn't say the tabernacle of God is coming. Now this is what is coming out from, he from heaven. Let's go back to Revelation 22. Listen, don't doubt. If you don't understand it, leave it. Don't doubt it. Or you can ask me a question. Praise be the name of the Lord. You can ask me a question. Don't speak against this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Revelation 21. If you watch, you discover that. You say, I saw a new heaven. This new heaven is a renewed mind. A renewed spirit. The spirit of your mind that is renewed. That is the new heaven. It's the spirit of your mind. So you need the spirit of your mind needs to be renewed. It needs to be renewed. It has been clouded with so many doctrines and teachings. It has been clouded with so many things. It needs to be renewed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation 1 12. Revelation 1. One ten. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. This was John. He said, I was in the spirits. Now listen. You see, why many cannot behold the tabernacle of God? Why many cannot behold the Christ within? Why many cannot identify themselves in Christ? Why many are looking away outside of themselves is because they are not in the spirit on the lost day. They are in the spirit on a denominational teaching. They are in the spirit on Moses' teaching. They are in the spirit on John the Baptist's teaching. They are in the spirit on Catholicism teaching. They're in the spirit on denominational teaching. They're in the spirit on every other religious teaching. Not in the spirit on the law. They're clouded. Their mind is clouded. Praise be the name of the Lord. Their mind is clouded. They're in the spirit on another day. Not on the lost day. The Lord is looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. They are in a wrong kind of spirit. Not in the spirit of the Lord. That is why they look away. They look away. They look away from the man whom the Lord knew before the foundation of the world. They look away from the man whom the Lord elected before the foundation of the world. They look away from the tabernacle of God that is with the man. They look away from the, they are beginning to look at outside, outside of themselves. Outside of themselves. They look away from within. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because they are not in the spirit on the lost day. 
Because what the Lord has come to do to our spirit is to enlighten our spirit. Is to awaken our spirit. Our spirit will be awakened to the reality that is in Christ. But the denomination have their own kind of teaching and truth. And instead of them to awaken you, they will put you to sleep. So that is why many, many are not looking within. When the Lord Jesus Christ came, he said, listen. He said, the kingdom of God is within you. Is within you. You are not bold to say it. If you go back to Revelation 21, you see, you are not bold to say it. Revelation 21, 3. You are not bold. You are not bold to say it. He said, I heard a great voice out of heaven. Heaven is the realm of the spirit. Is your spirit, the spirit of your mind. Because the spirit of your mind is not yet renewed. It's clouded. So clouded with wrong kind of teachings. Clouded with falsehood. Men that call themselves, they call themselves different names. They call themselves the chief apostle. They call themselves the seventh messenger. They call themselves... They call themselves the prophets. They call themselves the apostles. They call themselves different, different names. And they have made people to pay, listen, to believe in them. And they've taught them lies. That is why your mind, you cannot see the tabernacle of God that is with men. You can't see it. You can't see it. Because your spirit, the spirit of your mind is still not yet renewed. Still clouded. So much clouded. With wrong teaching. Look at this. Now let's go back to Revelation 1 10. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You see? For you to hear, you must be in the truth and you must be in the spirit. Because the Lord is looking for those that will worship Him in spirit and in truth. For you to hear. Listen. There is a conference that is going on. There is a meeting that is going on. There is a heavenly fellowship that is going on. The Bible says, where two or three are gathered together in my name. In my name. I am there. Oh my. You see, my, there are things that you don't know how to put them. This is not a gathering of showmanship that is not in his name. It's not a gathering to show that I'm better in knowledge that is not in his name. It's not a gathering of pride. Maybe you are discussing the Bible, but inside of your mind you want to do showmanship. You want to show that you know. That is not in his name. Because his name is his nature. Praise be the name of the Lord. His name is his nature. So if you are gathered in his name, in humility, in obedience, in honor to Christ, he is there. So there is a heavenly fellowship that is going on. Heavenly fellowship. We are Christ himself, his presence. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. He's present there. Glory to God. A heavenly fellowship that is going on. And if you are not in the spirit, and if you are not in the understanding of the Lord, the truth, you will not hear. Your ear will be blocked. You will, you will have an inching ear. Then you will be looking for, for teachers. Teachers according to your desires. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. You won't hear it. John said, I am in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me. There was a voice. A voice that was shouting behind him. It was a shout. And that voice was not an ordinary voice. Praise be the name of the Lord. It was not an ordinary voice. Glory to God. That was the voice of Christ. In his servants, in his people that have become 
become his servants. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because at the end when he turned, he saw voices. Glory to God. There was no but he saw voices. So that was the voice of his servants. The voice of the servants of Jesus. In Revelation 1, 1, he said this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Which God gave to him. To give to his servants. So you see, it is Jesus to his servants. Then from his servants, it is not given to the body. Praise be the name of the Lord. Now let's go back. Let's go back and read it. Revelation 1.1 1, 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. You know that word shortly? It is not like a prophecy. It is things that we quickly, that we come quickly, that we manifest fast without delay. Things that will shortly come to pass. He said, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant, John. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. So John, John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He turned, he heard a voice. And the voice that he heard was the voice. The voice of Jesus. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The voice of Jesus. The voice of Jesus. Because when he turned, he saw Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He saw the Son of Man in the midst of the church. That is where he saw him. Jesus in the midst. But many cannot see Jesus in the midst. They can't see because they are blind. They've been blinded by religion. Religion has blinded and clouded their minds. And that is why the manifestation of Jesus Christ is not bringing up a manifestation within them. It's not raising up a life, a fountain within them. Praise be the name of the Lord. Yeah. I was discussing with somebody sometimes ago. A brother told me that Pentecost is rain. Tabernacle is not rain. I look and I laughed. You know, listen, let me tell you. The difference between Pentecost and Tabernacle is simple. Now listen. Pentecost is rain. Tabernacle is rain. But the difference is Pentecost is not coming from within. Pentecost is coming from outside. It's not coming from within. But Tabernacle is coming from within. He said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters is coming from inside tabernacle is inside pentecost is outside coming upon praise be the name of the lord Hallelujah. when john heard it it was like pentecost because it wasn't coming from within him he was hearing it from behind it was like a rain pentecost coming like the truth to him preaching of the truth running on to him he heard that voice. And when he heard it, that made him to turn. Praise be the name of the Lord. When you move to Revelation 4, you, he no longer hear it from within. He's not hearing it from inside. Let's go to Revelation 4 and see it quickly. Revelation 4. Revelation 4, 1. It's after this I looked. And lo, a door was open. This was a door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. You see? So the, 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 the relationship is getting deeper. It's getting deeper. He it says like a trumpet talking with me. We said come up and I will show you I will show thee things which must be hereafter. He says it's not yet the end. There are things that need to come out. I will show you more things you need to know. Now when you come to Revelation 21 3, this is what is, what it is. He said, and I heard a great voice out of heaven. Heaven is the realm of the spirit. The spirit of his mind is renewed. And out of that spirit, that renewed spirit, out of it, there is a 
voice, a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. Listen. What many don't understand is they feel that, listen, God identified himself with man. He identified himself with man. He identified himself in your lowest states of mind. In your lowest state of being. That time that you think that you are weak. That time that is the weakest time. That is when you need him more. Praise be the name of the Lord. That's when you need him more. That's when you need to look within. Look within. Look within. The tabernacle of God is there. And let the weak say, in my weakness, I am strong. Amen. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That time that is your wicked time, the weakest, that time you feel that is the hopeless, that time you feel that, oh, all hope is gone, look within. Amen. Look within. Amen. Look within. You say, my strength is made perfect Amen. in your weakness. So it simply means that there is no weak spots. The tabernacle of God have no spots, have no weakness. If there is a weakness testimony, that testimony is not coming from Christ. There is no weakness. He said, "Let the weak." He said, "My," he said, "My strength is made perfect in your weakness." So that time you think that you are weak. That is when his strength is made perfect. So the church must come to that place where they understand that the tabernacle of God is present to heal them from every sickness. Is present to wipe away their tears. Is present to take away debts. Is present to consume everything that is troubling them. The tabernacle of God is with men. Look down, look within. Cast away every false voice. Every voice that is coming to bring condemnation to that body. The voice that is telling you that this body is not yet changed. It is the tabernacle of God with men that will take away death. That is what will change it. They are coming to condemn it. They are coming to make little of that temple. They are coming to make little. Now let me tell you where it is. Glory to God. Let's turn to the book of Revelation 13. This is the testimony you must avoid. Revelation 13. We're going to read verse 6. Verse 6. It says, And he opened his mouth in blasphemy. In blasphemy, you must you must avoid the voice of blasphemy. You must avoid it. Blasphemy is cause, cause to blaspheme, to cause. You see, God as the fault of the suffering of this world. Meanwhile, the tabernacle of God is with men to wipe away your tears. He's there to take away your trouble. Praise be the name of the Lord. He has come to you in your trouble time so that he can take away your trouble. Now, the voice of blasphemy will begin to curse God. There you are. It is the fault of God. Oh, my case is useless. My case is this. My case is that. That is blasphemy. Let the weak say I am strong. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because the tabernacle of God is with men. God has come to identify himself with your suffering. He's not far from you. He's not outside of you. He has come within to be identified and help you overcome. So you have to avoid the voice of blasphemy. Blame. Casting blame. That is blasphemy. 
and he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God. Watch. Against God. To blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. He blasphemed. So you have to. You have to avoid this blasphemy. Avoid it. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When they tell you that, oh, you can die. Tell him he has come here so that I will not die. He has come so that I will not die. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If they tell you that you are weak, tell them I am strong. If they tell you, where is your God to heal you? Tell them by his stripes, I am healed. Let them give you more of those stripes. Let them curse you. Let them strike you. I am healed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Don't blaspheme. When Job was going through his trials, they wanted him to blaspheme God. They, even the wife told him, he said, curse God and die. Just curse him and die. So, we may have been going through our trials. Brother, in that state, know that he is there. The tabernacle of God is there. He is there to take away. Now, listen. Go back to that place. Revelation 21. See. Revelation 21. We must grow where our voice in heaven only see victory. Only see the presence of the Almighty in our deaths, in our tears, in our sorrow, in our crying, in our pains. Let's see that he has come to identify with us. And let's see victory. See victory in death. See victory in pain. See victory in cry. See victory in tears. See victory in your weakest time. Let the weak say I am strong. And let the poor say I am rich. The tabernacle of God is with men. Praise be the name of the Lord. Oh my. Tomorrow I'm going to break it down so that we know how we can possess our vessel. I'm going to break it down. Today is an introduction by the grace of God, the grace given to me. I'll see how I can break it down. Those that are telling you that you are in expectation of something that will come and change you, brother. The only thing you need is a new mind. A mind that is renewed. A heart that is renewed. So that you can be able to see clearly and see the presence of Christ that is within. The Bible says, it says the world will not see me. Why won't the world see, see him? Because of unbelief. Wrong teaching. That's why they can't see him. And that is why you can't see him also. So what you need is a new mind. The spirit of your mind being renewed. That is the new heaven. And your heart being renewed. That is the new earth. Because sometimes the spirit and the heart is not in agreement. The spirit is willing. The heart will not accept it. The heart is trying to judge it. They are not in, agree in agreement. So what you need, listen, you don't need any other, listen, the Jesus, the Jesus that is present is more than enough for me. Amen. He is more than enough. I don't need any other. I need no other arguments. I need no other argument. The Jesus that is present is more than enough. Amen. What I need, I need a new mind. A mind without wide imagination. A new heart. A heart that
that can only receive the word of God. That is what you need. Then your eyes will be open to see the tabernacle that is with me. When Jesus Christ resurrected, where did he go to? Where did he go to? He went to the most holy place. He went to, to your spirits. He's there in your spirits. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. That's where he went to. He went into your spirit. So that your spirit will be awakened. That is where he is meditating on your behalf. To reconcile you. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Through the preaching of the word. Through his servants. Through the five-fold ministry. Through the ministration of the Spirit. He's there in your heart. Speaking to you. So that you'll be awakened to the reality of Christ. So that your spirit will be renewed. So that your old way of thinking will pass away. Praise be the name of the Lord. Man. You need to understand what is going on. We need to get it. Now let me let me show you something quickly before we close. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation 3. Let me show you something quickly. Revelation 3. Revelation 3, 12. Now, listen. 3, 12. Him that overcometh, pay attention. Will I make a pillar? What is a pillar? Hello? What is a pillar? When you are building a house and you put a pillar in that house, that pillar becomes a structure that holds the house. It becomes the foundation that holds the house. If the pillar falls, the house falls. So the house is the tabernacle of God, the dwelling place of God. Held by a pillar. Many are moving in and out. Today they are in Christ. Tomorrow they are in the world. Today they are confused. Tomorrow they are not confused. You are not yet a pillar. That's why you are going in and out. To and fro. To and fro. You are not yet a pillar. You need to overcome. Yeah. You need to overcome. Overcome that condition that is making you go to and fro. To and fro. Today you are confused. Tomorrow you are not confused. Next tomorrow somebody will come and take you out. Tomorrow you are, you are not here. You are not here. You are not here. You are not yet a pillar. Praise be the name of the Lord. Revelation 3.12. He said, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him. Now see where, see where what is being written. I will write upon him. Listen, I will write upon him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. The new Jerusalem you are waiting for must be written upon you. It must be in your mind. Praise be the name of the Lord. It must be the spirit of your mind. It must be written upon you. Praise be the name of the Lord. You must be awakened to it. Oh, the city of God, you must be awakened to it. Glory to God. The new Jerusalem, you must be awakened to it. So it's going to write it upon your mind. Glory to God. Where you are a pillar, you have the new Jerusalem. You have the new city. You have the name of God. You have the new name of Christ. Everything in the heaven. Out of that heaven, you can now see clear and shout. The tabernacle of God is with men. You will now see clear. You identify Christ. Identify him. And you see that work. 
that walk becoming quick. Many are waiting. I don't know what they are waiting for. You better grow up. Glory to God. Be resurrected into him, into the heavens. Have the mind of the new Jerusalem. Have the mind. Have all those things. Praise be the name of the Lord. Have it. And become a pillar. Become the tabernacle of God. Because the tabernacle of God is with men. Christ is, listen, Christ is not doing anything from anywhere. He's present here. But your, his presence is sealed to carnality. So that's why those that are carnally minded, they can't see him. You have to be spiritually minded. Praise be the name of the Lord. Now let's turn quickly to John 15. Maybe we'll close with this. John 15. Let's turn to John 15. Now watch. John 15, I'm going to... Remember the tabernacle of God is with me. John 15. And that's why Jesus died. He sent his spirit. He sent his spirit so that you will recognize the Christ that is within you, the tabernacle of God that is with men. John 15, now watch this. John 15. Now let's take it up a bit. I will just explain it so that because of time, so the Lord Jesus Christ was speaking to them. I'm go to I'm going to the Father. 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 Now let me let me still talk about this. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. There are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Spirit. And these three are one. The Father is the root. The spirit is the life, the life that manifests the world. You manifest it. So, when the root is the father, is the mind of the father. When the root is Christ, because we can, we don't even know who the father is. It is Christ that come to show us who the father is. Praise be the name of the Lord. The father become materialized. The father become declared. Because we are materialized scripture. So he, he, he came to a form. So all that saw him. And they call him the father in the Old Testament. What they saw. They saw him in fire. They saw him in the cloud. They saw him in the pillar of fire. They saw him in the burning bush. They saw him in different, different form. That is Christ that you saw. That is Christ. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. The Father manifests himself, made himself material, materialized himself so that he can communicate with you. That is Christ. So the Father that you are looking for is Christ. So stop comparing Christ with the Father. Stop making that comparison. Praise be the name of the Lord. Because this is what was going on in, in, in this place also. So one of them, when the Lord was there, he said, I go to the Father, I go to the Father. Do you know where he's going to? I'm going to your mind, the spirit of your mind, so that you can have my mind. You can have my thoughts. You can think like me. You can have my will. You can have my life. And you can be the expression of my person. That's what he's telling them. You can be the expression of my person. I'm going into your mind. I'm going to become the father in your mind. I'm going to become the root of your life. I'm going to become the root of David. I'm going to the father. Oh my. Thomas. There are many Thomases today. He says, show us a father. And the sufficient us. We'll be hearing father, father. He says, show us. The Lord Jesus Christ told them. He said, have I been all this while with you and you don't know me? He that have seen me have seen the Father. Why say, show us the Father? You know, those in the Old Testament, they saw the Father, they worship him. Jo Abraham saw him and worship him. He saw him. 
who is that one? You, you cannot see the father in the form that he is. He can only come to meet you in your form. You can't. You can't. You can't. He, so he met us as man today. You know, in the Old Testament, he met them in different, different forms, different way. Pillar of fire, pillar of light, different, different way. But today, the tabernacle of God is with man. He's meeting you in your weakness, in your sickness, in your sin, in your hopeless states. He's present there with you. The tabernacle of God is with man. Praise be the name of the Lord. So let's go back to John 15. Now watch. So I take it from 12. This is my commandment. That you love one another. As I have loved you. Greater love. Had no man. Than this. That a man. Laid down his life. For his friends. How are you going to love one another? How are you going to love one another? Do you know that love. Is oneness. Love is union. Love is coming to this to one mind. We must come to one mind. Praise be the name of the Lord. We must rise up from the faith of the Son of God. Rise up to the virtue of the Son of God. Rise up to the knowledge of the Son of God. Rise up to the patience, temperance, brotherly kindness, and to charity. Topping it with love. Praise be the name of the Lord. Love one another. Come to that place where you see yourself the same way you see me. You see Jesus in your brother. You see Jesus in your sister. You see Jesus. No matter how your brother is suffering, you see Jesus in that suffering. No matter how your sister is suffering, you see Jesus in that suffering. When people come with blasphemy, to blaspheme the house of God. To blaspheme the temple of God. Praise be the name of the Lord. You rebuke it. Because you love him so much. You are not seeing what they are seeing. Because they are looking at the weakness. You are looking at the strengths. You are looking at Christ. Begin to see one another in Christ. In the strength of Christ. In the perfection of Christ. Praise be the name of the Lord. That is that oneness. That is that love. It's a greater love. Had no man than this. That a man laid down his life for his friends. Yeah, my friends. If you do whatever I command you. Now this is going taking us to another order. Praise be the name of the Lord. You cannot say that you are the tabernacle of God and you involve yourself in fleshly things. You involve yourself in weakness. Oh, oh, because ah, brother said in my weakness, don't see my sister in weakness, see her in, in the strength of Jesus. Brother, sister, if I catch you in that weakness, I will rebuke you. Praise be the name of the Lord. I will rebuke, I will flog you. So that you will get off from there. Because the body of Christ is not for nonsense. Right. It must be sanctified because Christ is sanctified. Amen. You cannot see your brother or your sister doing wrong and you are encouraging her. You are popping her at the back. Oh, I love you. That is not love. That is not love. You must keep that commandment of Christ. You must show forth your election. Now this is how this is how Paul put it. Paul said, with my mind I serve the law. So there are two laws. The law of God and the law of sin and death. Two laws. And you must keep those two laws. So don't think that love is a passport to continue in your sin. No, sir. No, sir. The body of Christ is holy, and you must be holy. That's why when when Paul, when John, when Peter was talking nonsense, you know what the Lord just said? He said, "Get deep behind me, Satan." So you are enemy. This is enemy. 
Praise be the name of the Lord. So love is, there is correction in love. So the judgment that is beginning in the house of God is the house of correction. So that's why when you come into the temple, there's a place where, listen, there's a place where there is fire that is being born at the altar. You are being born. All the chaffs, all the carnality is being born down. Praise be the name of the Lord. It's being born down. You find them. It's there in the temple. Don't think you carry your own belief and you get into the most holy place. No, sir. It doesn't work that way. Praise be the name of the Lord. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Keep it. Keep my commandments. Let there be oneness in your spirit. Let there be oneness in your soul. Let there be oneness in your flesh. Keep it. Keep that bond of perfection. Praise be the name of the Lord. Paul said there are two laws. Two laws. You know, you know where sin came in. See where sin came in. The flesh is sin to begin with. So the law of God is to save the flesh. The law of God is to deliver the flesh. To give the flesh strength to be made alive. So when the Lord gave Adam his law, he said, eat the tree of life. Don't eat the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. So that is the law of God. And the Lord is telling us, the hidden manna is your food. The body of Christ is your food. The blood of Christ is your food. Not, not the, the, listen, there is a feast of Pentecost that is a living feast. Living has been added to it. Living has been added to it. Falsehood has been added to it. The bread that the, 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 the high priest eats is that bread that has no leaven in it. Praise be the name of the Lord. So, that is the root of sin. Pentecost has given them living. So they are eating a rotten food. Not the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ has no living. So, with their mind, in your mind, your mind is, the spirit of your mind is being renewed with the truth. With the day of the Lord. With the truth. You are feeding the body of Christ. As you are seated here now, hearing this word, you are eating the body of Christ. Your spirit is being renewed. Praise be the name of the Lord. That is the law of God. It's giving you an understanding. It's giving you a life. That life will help you. It will help you to overcome the law of sin. It will help you to know how to live. Listen, this body. I was telling somebody the other day, there are there are things hidden in your body. And those things can only come out when you possess your body in righteousness. The thing that the Lord has put there will be revealed. Praise be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I have five more minutes. Now let's take one more verse. John 15. Henceforth, I call you no I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made them known unto you. Praise be the name of the Lord. Amen. When you go to Revelation 1, at the time the Lord was revealing himself to his servants, they we are his servants. Glory to God. But when you proceed, they are no longer servants. They become friends. They become family. They become one with him. We are going to look deeper into all this tomorrow. Praise be the name of the Lord. So we are going to continue from part two tomorrow. The tabernacle of God. This is something that you must understand. You must be conscious of. You must walk consciously of every day of your life. Amen. Be conscious that you are the tabernacle of God. Amen. That in whatever you are going through, He is present with you. Shall we rise up? I believe God. I believe God.
I believe God, it must be done. Evil as he has said, trust and obey, look up and say, I believe the Lord, I believe the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. You are brought to our remembrance, O oh God, that we are your tabernacle. We are the ones that the Father have known. Coming into this world with the life of the Father. Awakening, O oh God. Oh, my Father and my God. Many of us need a renewal of our minds. We need a new heaven. The renewal of our mind and our hearts. So that there will be a yielding, a yielding, a great harvest. Harvest of 20, 60, and 100, Father, Amen. to the glory of your name. Amen. Father, may our heart be renewed. Amen. Bring us to that place, O oh God, that we are pillars, not going to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Bring us to that place, O oh God, where the shout has become the voice. Amen. We are out of our bellies flowing rivers of living waters. Amen. Oh, Father, help us, Lord Jesus, Amen. to see just like you, Amen. to live just like you, Amen. to walk just like you, Amen. and to become just like you. Amen. Bless everyone that have come tonight. Oh God, everyone, oh God, have one suffering or the other, Lord Jesus. They trust you, Father, Lord. I pray, oh God, as they are so prosperous, oh God, let there be a rising up of a virtue of the Christ within them, Lord, to heal them, Father. Amen. Let there be miraculous happening, oh God, within Amen. us, Father. Let it not be like the miracle of the world, but let it be the signs and wonders that follow our that follow our faith. Amen. Bring us here tomorrow, Father. Amen. May you feed us, O oh God. We are thankful to you, Lord. Amen. For in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you.